Hello everyone, you're listening to America Meditating Radio. We collect wisdom, inspire each other, and empower hearts on demand 24-7. I'm Sister Jenna, host of the syndicated America Meditating Radio. Join us as we talk one-on-one with leading experts who answer life's most compelling questions. Because in a world of uncertainty, we need answers right here, right now. America Meditating Radio, a show for everyone to learn more about this amazing thing called life. Who are you? Let me just ask you that again. Who are you? of a good relationship with intentions and goals is keeping in mind that the primary aim of setting and working towards those goals is to feel the way you want to feel. The external things we want to have and do and experience, those are your secondary goals, all of which will get you back to the whole cosmic point, experiencing your core desired feelings.
Hello, everyone. Welcome to America Meditating Radio. That was our friend Daniel Laporte, Desires Divine, on Minnie Groot's album of Heartbeats. I love this album. If you get a chance and you want to Spotify it or Google search it, it's um, Monique Rhodes' Heartbeats, where she features just incredible voices on spirituality and meditation and reflection to help us to get through the day just a little bit better, just a little bit better. You know, joining us on the air means a lot to me, and as we enter into 2018, it is safe to say we want to enter it with the most optimistic vision of ourselves and of our country and of our world. And we have had quite a whirlwind of a year. This has been a year that has tested and challenged the best of us, the worst of us, the unknown of us. This is the year that I believe has signaled to each and every one of you, us rather, if we are awakened, if we are really truthfully living our core, if we really, really listen to our conscience. I was speaking to um, uh, someone the other day, and they are a pastor of a very big church, and they were sharing something about the um, GOP, the tax bill that's being that's been passed, or what have you. I can't even keep up anymore. But he was basically saying that it was so godless, and in his sharing, how godless that scene was, he was getting godless. <laughs> I'm, I'm only laughing only because I'm trying to emphasize to all of us the power of this time, that even if I point my finger at you, I've got four more others telling me, well, are you free of of vice? Are you free of anger? Are you free of prejudice? Are you free of scamming people? Are you free? And I can't liberate you if I'm not liberated myself. So this age that we have now walked into or been forced into is the age of awakening, is the age of spiritually paying attention to the quality of our thoughts, the quality of our feelings. And I'm telling each and every one of you on the air, we're going to need to use the virtue of courage and consistency like no other time. This is our age to wake our spirits, to invite our spirit to be authentic and to be truthful. And you bump into a variety of emotions and and feelings as you're going through the journey. You're going to feel maybe tired. You're going to feel disillusioned. You might feel ashamed. You might start to blame those around you. You might start to dislike the ones you've always liked only because you are struggling with your power. You haven't raised your bar to your excellence, to where you need to be for you. And as much as that sometimes gets really under my skin, Why is it always about me? It should be about everyone else's responsibility and accountability. Well, it is. If I take care of myself, I might just influence you to take care of yourself, and then you might do that to another, and it starts to expand and grow. So it's not just about me. It's about all of us, but it does begin with me. Thank you for joining America Meditating Radio, and it's always a delight to be your host. We are going to be having a chit-chat with author Karen Miller, so don't touch the dial. And, you know, we have released our new CD, and I really hope that for the holiday season you'll think about purchasing that for your friends and family. The reason why is the CD pulls from the Bill of Rights, the Constitution, the preamble, and we try to find the words that would match a more inclusive narrative for our country, for our lives, for each other. So I'm going to play a little sneak preview. Here's Positive Resistance from Inclusion Revolution and then we'll be having our wonderful chit-chat with attorney and author Karen Miller. Take a deep breath. There is a positive resistance that persists throughout our humanity's story. It's the resistance that will not allow the dark to take over the light completely. It is the resistance fueled with passion, goodness, truth, and benevolence. It is for the benefit of all and never just some. So in this moment of quiet reflection, when I think 
I resist. What do I mean? What do I wish to not nurture? And what do I wish to encourage to make humanity's story one of victory? To think I resist will never be enough. But I know I must change my own darkness that is within me. When I can transform my own dark into light, my negative state to a positive state, fear into love, this is positive resistance. As I weed out the garden of my mind, uprooting what is no longer a healthy thought, what intention or experiences of the past that no longer serve me or others, I can feel a positive resistance moving me upwards and forward in this deep silent space of wisdom I have the power to keep maintaining positive thoughts for the self for everyone around me it is in this gentle persistence that I am at peace inside. I'm able to observe the qualities needed to move out all traces of darkness into light because I'm committed, convicted, and dedicated to a positive resistance inside, ushering through unstoppable positive changes in myself and in our world. Let me take this time to sit in the stillness and be silent. Welcome back. That was Positive Resistance from Inclusion Revolution Together with Love. I trust that you could feel the the vibe, you know, this need for us to kind of find a way in how we can at least um, respect each other. That if we're going to have any kind of resistance, let it be that we're not fueling the same fire we're trying to out or extinguish. We need to begin to fuel the fire of virtues and values and, and divinity, something global that everyone can relate to. And speaking about that, attorney and author Karen Miller brings us a powerful values-based framework that is uniting people around the world for social good. In her inaugural book, Global Values, Karen suggests that only a radically different framework of how humanity organizes itself will be sustainable, that we must shift from an isolationist paradigm to a new holistic approach. Karen has worked with transformational leaders including Marianne Williamson, Deepak Chopra, Barbara Marks Hubbard, and currently serves as a senior vice president and general counsel of an international consortium of movie studios, retailers, and technology companies. Now, Karen also is the founder of Our New Evolution, where she promotes initiatives that support global values of unity, community, life, freedom, connection, creativity, choice, integrity, you name it. The Global Values Facebook page has gained nearly 300,000 fans, mainly young men between the ages of 18 and 24. Isn't that interesting? They're from the Middle East and South Asia, and she continues to draw attention from around the world. Today, we're so honored to welcome Karen Miller to America Meditating Radio. Thank you, Karen, for what you're doing. That This is so up my alley of your work. It is so priceless. Thank you, Sister thank Jenna. You. Mm-hmm. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It almost feels like values and virtues have gone out the door, but they really haven't. 
they're actually waking up. I think those of us who are really ready to be awakened, wouldn't you say? I would say thank you so much. It's such a pleasure to be here and to join you on your program today. Yeah, I think that values are critical at this time. I was enjoying your introduction and the talk about the tax bill and the challenges that we face today. And Mm -hmm. I think that values, when we look inside and we look at ourselves, it really comes down to our values as what is shaping our reality today. Yes, and it just seems as if we have kind of been blindsided by our own lack of attention on the self. And with the global challenges, Karen, that we're facing right now, war, terrorism, politics, racism, it's now in the Olympics, it's in Hollywood, there's so much being revealed. How can any one person believe or feel that they are able to make a difference? Well, as you were saying, I think it really comes down to transforming ourselves. You know, I went through some challenges uh, myself with anxiety and fear and dealing with the world around me. And what I saw is is really chaos. Uh, So I felt some internal conflict and with anxiety, personal anxiety and depression. And then I saw global conflict as well. I was in Washington, D.C. In, uh, at nine, during 9-11, and uh, during that time, I, you know, I started to see the fear and separation, while at the same time, the world coming together uh, around these, these tragedies. And how I transformed and dealt with these things myself was really going within. I learned how to meditate 15 years ago and learned how to really address the conflicts within myself. Uh, As you Mm -hmm. said, when when we go within ourselves, the darkness within ourselves starts to bubble up and we can address those things and transform the things that are holding us back in life. Uh, So the call to action in my book is really to meditate. And uh, that's why I'm such a fan of what you're doing, promoting Mm -hmm. meditating here on this show. Thank you so much. Your organization is called Our New Evolution. But could you educate us a little bit more? What does it mean? And how do we begin our process of evolving? There are those of us that are really feeling that a shift must take place. There are those of us who have been on the journey for the shift to take place. There are those of us who have been traveling for a long time that we wonder if we have wasted our evolving. And you, I hope you can understand what I mean. Have we wasted all this evolving yeah. to what we're in right now? I was talking to Carolyn <laughs> Mace the other day, and she's like, did we just waste all that spiritual effort on what we're dealing with today in America? So tell us about what is our new evolution? How can we how can we identify the steps that we might need to take to begin that or to sustain it? Right. Uh, so our new evolution is my organization, <laughs> and, and it means, uh, one, that we're moving from a state of isolationism and separation and duality to a, a state of cooperation and collaboration. So basically in my book, Global Values, I selected 10 values to tell the story of unity consciousness. Life is evolving, uh, and our purpose in life is to align with those forces, the forces of love itself, to help reclaim the forces on the earth for the forces of love. So my path has been a a shift from a fear-based mentality to a love-based mentality. And I think that uh, the goal of, of selecting values as a mechanism to promote the evolution of humanity is to use non-sectarian language of unity, community, life, freedom, connection, sustainability, creativity, empowerment, choice, and integrity, using non-sectarian values language to reach across cultural, religious, and political boundaries to unite us as one. So it's a mechanism to have that conversation and to reflect on uh, what do we believe? Are we going to individually align with forces that separate us and divide us and isolate us from the rest of humanity and the rest of life? Or are we going to align our actions with a value of life and all people working for the welfare of all? So we have the ability to consciously choose the direction that society evolves today, and that's our new evolution. That's very good, timely too. Makes sense. But I think so many of us 
tend to hold our values very personal. We even get into heated debate as to who we think or how we think our, our values have this sort of a hierarchical setting. I was in a room with folks um, creating a program called Living Values, and there was an experiment that, that started where we were offered to lay down what our primary values were as a person. And then we were taken through a variety of different scenarios, and we noticed that our value system changed. So let's say I really valued honesty. Then as I found myself in a situation, I replaced it with maybe respect, but I wasn't honest. And so it started to shift because if I was honest, I think it would hurt the person's feeling. So instead, we decided to use the value of respect. Would you find that values tend to shift and change because of situations or interpretation? Or is a value just a value and that's just how we should use it? Oh, of course, uh, our values shift and change all the time. And I want to be Mm -hmm. clear, these 10 values that I selected are really, again, just to tell the story of unity consciousness. These are values that can be used as a tool for conversation purposes to talk about unity consciousness and soul consciousness uh, itself. Um, But global values, as I've articulated them in, in the book, It's really contrary to moral relativism or ethical relativism, which is the position that moral or ethical um, propositions don't reflect an objective or universal moral truth, but instead make a claim that morals and ethics are relative to society and culture, historical or personal circumstances. In the book, I talk more of that Unity consciousness is good. <laughs> it's, it's very simple that working towards community and working in collaboration is effective for long-term sustainability. It's a, really a, a moral objectivism approach like the Stoics of ancient Greece. And I recently read a, a book by Sam Harris called The Moral Landscape where he takes this approach as well. So I think that there are certain things that are just bad. Like, you know, hitting someone in the head with a rock for no reason is objectively bad. (laughs) And there are things that are objectively good. And what I'm articulating in in the book is that suggesting that it's helpful to take collaborative approach for long-term sustainability rather than working in isolation for self-benefit in Mm. the short run. Love that. That makes a lot of sense. If someone wants to take a small step right here today, what would you suggest in connecting to their global values? Really working on yourself and going within. Uh, I practice Mm -hmm. yoga and meditation. I also practice smiling at other people, Uh, you know, just Mm -hmm. uh, sharing joy with other people in your regular active daily life and connecting with others having conversations with people with opposing viewpoints. I wanted, I think one of the things that's really missing today in the political dialogue in Washington, D.C., is really yes. compassionate listening to opposing viewpoints, sending love to your perceived enemies, stepping into the shoes of another and forgiving. So I really think that this empathy and, and stepping into the shoes of another is, is very critical, as well as looking at ourselves and uncovering the darkness within so that we can spread the joy and smile at others and support others. We can't do that until we take care of ourselves. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's been interesting because I think many of us are struggling with how to take care of ourselves. We've um, focused a lot on the label and the external definition of what we have been, you know, told. This is self-care. Drive a good car, have a beautiful house, have a good partner, uh, perhaps build a very lucrative career. You're, you, you've taken care of yourself. But we've seen even now you could be a billionaire and you're not happy. And so the self-care, uh, I think, is the genesis of how we're intending to sustain our future because the world depends on the way we feel as human beings. Right. And I talk about how like creates like. So if we're living in fear and separation and isolationism and are are basically unhappy, unfortunately, we create more of that. What we're putting out in the world creates more of that. If we're living in love and compassion and unity consciousness, we create more of that. We spread that when we walk around uh, and and connect with others and, and do our job during the day. So I think that 
again, it, 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 it really comes down to transforming ourselves so that we can transform the world. Right. And then again, that's where the courage begins, isn't it? What in your estimation yes. is at the heart of the global disconnect that you write about and how can we begin to overcome it? I know you've mentioned a little bit of that already, but what's at the heart of our disconnect? Yeah, you know, I think we have a long history of working in and living in a environment where so many people are in fear and disconnection. So it's just being perpetuated, as we talked about. The media, unfortunately, we're always looking at our phones, we're looking at um, computer screens, we're watching TV and hearing the news, and it's just being amplified by so many of those sources. And I think that so many people, as we can see from the last election and, and analysis of that within the United States, so many people are feeling misunderstood or ignored or unheard, um, and they're shielding themselves, trying to protect themselves from others. Um, but we have a ch- choice here. We can step out of that fear and disconnection and choose to connect on a positive level with others. We can choose to have those conversations, those difficult conversations with people right. who think so differently than we do and try to understand them. Um, so I think that uh, really the heart of this global disconnect is that it's our defense mechanism against fear and disconnection is protecting ourselves, isolating ourselves further. That's the natural tendency of someone throwing something at you. You might duck. You might shield yourself. And and really it, it takes a lot of courage, like you said, to uh, step out of that and open your arms and and listen and ask a question as to where the other person is coming from. Mm-hmm. It it does. It takes a lot of courage. I agree with that because what we might hear this language now of the forgotten folks, and I really don't buy into it. It's not true. No one was forgotten. I think individuals have stopped amplifying their game. They've stopped building their capacity, and they were living from an interpretation of who they think they are in this country or perhaps in the world. So what's forgotten is that they forgot that they had to turn inwards and find their own abilities to keep upgrading themselves. And then wanting Mm. to turn to leadership, you know, wanting to turn to a particular group of people to say, let everybody know we're still important, we're still valuable, we're still really the, the rulers and the masses of this land. It is a very unhealthy narrative because it keeps them exactly where they are and we're moving into this this technology this technological age we're moving into the age of solar power we're moving into the age of light and if they're still thinking about coals and they're still thinking about stones and sticks what can we do if you've got all these immigrants that are coming in with with degrees for engineering, technology, science, and stuff, and my own brothers and sisters that are living in the middle of America are still waiting for a factory to open up just so that certain jobs can be given, but they're not upgrading their own inner knowing and education, I think it's one of the most ghastly things that you could do for your people and your citizens. It's so important for us, I think, to engage in the conversation. You're not forgotten, but did you forget that we are all here to upgrade ourselves? Did you forget yourself? Because I believe the previous administration wasn't forgetting anyone. The previous administration before that wasn't really forgetting anyone. The previous administration for that wasn't forgetting anyone. They were just trying to get more votes and to get reelected. So everybody's going to get you know, shafted at some point or the other. So <laughs> the values, you know, the values that you have brought out make so much sense. So why is it not making sense on the Hill? Why is it not making sense in our people's home? Why does it make sense, you know, in countries or areas of our of world? And perhaps it's what you said, people aren't reflective. They're not turning inwards to find their own cure and, and understanding that it's on them to upgrade their lives. Right. Yeah, I I completely agree. And that's the reason that I um, mm. chose values as this unifying principle, because values are very um, personal. That's where our all our thoughts, our actions uh, come from our values and belief systems. And right. so uh, I think that unity consciousness is critical for this shift, uh, a cultural shift 
um, and to bridge these divides that we've built. Mm -hmm. I think that, uh, you know, the, the microphone and the megaphone has really been taken over by those forces uh, that would promote um, division and duality and, you know, various approaches that separate us and continue, continue to keep us separated. And it's up mm-hmm. to us individually to change that dialogue. Exactly. Um, and, and above and beyond that, I, I really feel that this unity consciousness aligns with the fundamental principles of the universe, who we really are, who, when we align with them, life just becomes easier for us. We can go with right. the flow. Um, we can um, bring together, you know, I was, when I lived in D.C., I started, I was working with Marianne Williamson and Deepak Chopra, and I saw these many different groups, peace groups, social justice groups, environmental groups, and sustainability, diversity initiatives. Uh, They're all very different initiatives. What does environmental sustainability have to do with social justice? What does it have to do with uh, peace? Really, it it kind of comes down, some of these things come down to nonviolence, but fundamentally it comes down to a deep conviction that we're all connected, we're all one body of life, and everything that we do impacts everything else. And Mm -hmm. so when I started going to these various groups, I'd see uh, the same people there. I'd see the same people at a vegan event as something that was social justice. Uh, And I thought, okay, this is interesting. What are these beliefs that we hold? What are these values that we hold that could unify these many sectors of society, uh, these many social transformation initiatives? Uh, And it it came down to to what I call global values. Beautiful. Well, look, where can our listeners get information on you, your work, the book? Sure. Uh, Please uh, check out the website. It's our new evolution.org and uh, uh, the Facebook page is global values movement. Uh, and as I said, it's, it's very interesting. I thought that this uh, would take off mostly with the new age communities or spiritual communities within the United States, but it has taken up with young men in the Middle East and mm-hmm. also uh, South Asia there in Bangladesh is one of the largest populations who are following global values on social media. So please check that out and participate. Uh, I'd love to hear your comments. And those of you who are listening, I'd love to hear comments and what global values mean to you. Oh, beautiful. We just signed on just now as we spoke, and thank you so much. Karen, thank you for your work, and do keep in touch, and hope to see you when you're back in D.C. Great. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Take good care. Bye-bye. It's so simple. It's it's universal values it's being thoughtful it's it's coming from a place of conscience and yet we still struggle with just being respectful and kind and i know when i lose it i'm just not serving my spirit i'm not in a state of serving my own soul i'm not living my core universal global values i hope you've enjoyed our conversation attorney karen miller an author and please visit her at our new org. it was a pleasure having a chit chat with her before we end the show today we cannot finish it without having one of sister gita's wonderful readings of the day she's in the studio with me and i want to know what do you have for us that will take us to another evolutionary level sister gita oh shanti good day to you all Let's think of a pocketbook full of wisdom. Find at least one good quality in everyone, no matter how many defects are visible to you. The more you focus on the good, the more power you give to people, the sooner they will be able to change. Your thoughts create your feelings. To save yourself from useless and painful feelings, don't think about useless or negative thoughts, negative things, or defects in others. Om Shanti. Ah, Wow, a book of wisdom is deep within our soul.
Thank you so much, Sister Gita. That was lovely. And remember now as we end our show every day, no one can take away your happiness unless you give them permission. And we are here to love each other the same. Here's Inner City by Marvin Gaye. Thank you. 